Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, and uh, friends, I'm going to start it with, uh, with the decision I've made. Uh, many of you know that I made the decision that I was going to run for the, or I was going to try to collect signatures, I should say, to run for the Ohio House. And I do very much intend to do that. However, I forget who it was that said to Ronald Reagan, they said, you'll be president someday, no, so, well, you'll be president one year, but this isn't your year. I want to thank Paul Hines for having faith in me and to run, and it's something, again, I do intend to do. However, I have a lot of people all over the country that have told me I should run and I should, you know, give it a shot. That is, uh, because of the show, I haven't really done as good of a job, perhaps, as I could have, of making sure that people in my local area know about my ideas and what I have. Um, between all the sites I posted on, there's probably a few thousand people that would like to see me run. However, I don't know that that's the case in my own hometown, because, you know, the nature of the internet and this show. So what I'm going to do is uh, spend some time on focusing my attentions to this area. Um, at least if I'm going to continue running for this, uh, debating running for the Ohio House. All I'm going to do if I run right now is be that uh, the, the guy nobody's ever heard of before. I'm going to run and I'm going to lose, and I'm not running to lose. I'm not, it's going to take up a lot of my life. And, uh, again, it's not because I don't have the ideas. I do have the ideas. You that listen to this show know that I have many of the ideas. I do have a platform. I want to take a lot of the restrictions away and uh, that stop people from opening up businesses. I want to prevent uh, nonviolent criminals from facing a lot of time in jail. I want to do those types of things. But you know what? More people in this area have to know who I am. And I don't know that I have... Uh, I think I may have confused uh, internet uh, people all over the place with uh, the, the need to alert everyone where I'm at as to what I'm doing. So, with that in mind, please know that I will, in fact, be running for public office. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I come out of the gate strong and everybody locally knows who I am before I do so. But I want to thank everyone that supported me. And again, I, it will definitely happen, my friends. It will definitely happen. I got my feet wet now, and I have some idea what my game plan needs to be then if I am going to do it. Friends, I'm going to hop on to the news. Uh, the headline is North Texas drivers stopped at roadblock asked for saliva blood. However, the site has broken the correct views rule. When you have a video that you cannot shut off and you play, I don't tell people uh, who the uh, who the site is. And um, I'll tell you this though: you can uh, if you type in that um, headline, you you end up at the page. But get ready because it's going to play and it's going to annoy you. And they annoyed me. That's why I'm not saying where it's from. Some drivers along a busy Fort Worth street on Friday were stopped at a police roadblock and directed into a parking lot where they were asked by federal contractors for samples of their breath, saliva, and even blood. It was part of a government research study aimed at determining the number of drunken or drug-impaired drivers. It just doesn't seem right that you can be forced off the road when you're not doing anything wrong, said Kim Cope, correctly who said she was on her lunch break when she was forced to pull over at a roadblock on Beach Street in North Fort Worth. Again, uh, doing a massive police uh, overreaching Big Brother story today. All of them. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which is spending $7.9 million on the survey over three years, said that participation was 100% voluntary and anonymous. Sure. But Cope said it didn't feel very voluntary to her, despite signs saying that it was. I gestured, I gestured to the guy in front that I just wanted to go straight, but he wouldn't let me and forced me into a parking lot, she said. Once parked, she couldn't believe what was asked next. They were asking for cheek swabs, she said. They would give you $10 for that. Also, if you let them take your blood, they would pay you 50 for that. 
And if you did it, you're a bonehead. At the very least, she said they wanted to test her breath for alcohol. She said she felt trapped. And again, everybody knows uh, that uh, DUI laws don't have anything to do with public safety at all. They have to do with making money from the, to, from the state, and with money for the city. Uh, taking money from sober drivers by calling them drunk. I finally did the breathalyzer test just because I thought that would be the easiest way to leave, she said, adding that she received no money. Fort Worth police earlier said they could not immediately find any record of officer involvement, but said police spokesman Sergeant Kelly Peel, he said it Tuesday at the department's traffic division, coordinated with the NHTSA on the use of off-duty officers after the agency asked for help with the survey. We are reviewing the actions of all police personnel involved to ensure that FWPD policies and procedures were followed, he said. We apologize if any of our drivers and citizens were offended or inconvenienced by the NHTSA National Roadside Survey. Yeah, I bet they are, because that's, that's what will save face if they just say, oh, we're so sorry people felt that way. This is a breach of the Fourth Amendment. A God-given right. You were born with the right, as outlined in our in the structure of the country. You were born with the right to not have that happen. So stick up for it, uh, friends. It says uh, cops now enforcing anal probe rings on Americans routinely. I mentioned this before, well, this is now an ongoing, repeated uh, thing here. Infowars Steve Watson. Earlier this week, we covered the story of an innocent New Mexico man who was forced to endure 14 hours of enforced anal probing at the hands of doctors on the orders of cops looking for narcotics and was then billed by a medical center for it. For the right to be probed. I did a long story on that. It has now emerged that this was not an isolated incident, and that another person was treated the exact same way in the same medical center. In October, Timothy Young was pulled over by cops in Lordsburg, in New Mexico, for not using his blinker. According to police reports, it says, the same drug-sniffing dog that featured in David Eckert's ordeal described above, again reacted to Mr. Young's case. KOB Eyewitness News 4 reports that Young was immediately taken to the same hospital, the Gila Regional Medical Center in Silver City, and just like Eckert, was subjected to anal exams and x-rays of his stomach without giving his consent. Now, beyond the uncomfortable anal probing, which, again, you were born with the right to not have done to you, it is your birthright, um, x-rays are very dangerous. For instance, say they picked me to do it too. I just had dental x-rays done because I'm probably going to have a cleaning. I have had x-rays of my chest and head when I had the vertigo that I mentioned about two or three months ago. I don't need to be juiced with another x-ray and this this idea that you can just hand out x-rays like Tic Tacs there's a certain number that you should have only when needed. In other words, they're putting people's health at risk here. They don't know how many x-rays the people had before they juice them again. The examinations again turned up nothing and it turned out to be the search warrant obtained by the cops was issued in a different county to where the medical exams took place. Illegal. KOB Eyewitness News 4 also reports that the drug-sniffing dog certification expired in 2011 <clears throat> and was never renewed. The law states that drug dogs must be recertified every year. So, it was illegal to do the uh, probe, the exam, the violation, in the area that it was in because that's not where the search warrant was issued. It's a different county. It was illegal for that reason. And the dog was not certified. We have done public requests to find anything that would show this dog has been trained. We have evidence that this dog has had false alerts in the past, David Eckert's attorney Shannon Kennedy said. Also, here's my question. 
I've got a question for you. I'm in a band. There were a number of people behind a venue where we played that was sitting just by my van, and some of them partook of marijuana. Now, if that smell just happens to be on me and the drug dog goes off and I haven't done anything, then how is it that my Fourth Amendment rights get violated? See how this, this drug dog thing doesn't really work so well in the real world? Well, he looks suspicious. He's in a big white van. You can't carry band gear in a Yugo, now can you? The medical center faces the possibility of hefty fines. I hope they shut it down. With the doctors in question scheduled to face the state licensing board, which may revoke their licenses to practice medicine. That would probably be a very strong case, but I could see... Hey, the ones who did this probably should lose their license because giving someone an x-ray when they don't need one does in theory do harm and therefore you've broken the Hippocratic Oath. The police officers involved in Young's case will face a law enforcement disciplinary board good, while in Eckert's case all involved are staring at a weighty lawsuit. They are very good. The second case indicates the police are conducting this procedure as a matter of routine and when a drug-sniffing dog reacts to anyone that they stop. The trouble is they are trained to give false positives so that they can bring more money into the state. Um, friends, as my uh, set crumbles behind me, do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do, you're going to find that you are now in a site that will give you some of the most awesome Christmas presents you've ever seen. For instance, do you know anybody that likes uh, fantasy things at all? Like... Uh, any of the zombie stuff, any anybody into anything like that. The M48 Tactical Tomahawk acts with snap-on sheath, $39.99. If you know someone into that, they're going to love it. Uh, how about something very practical if uh, you don't know someone into that? The Shock Light Stun Gun Flashlight, $54.99. It is a flashlight, and if someone tries to rob you, it is stun gun, and uh, the person robbing you will find that out very quickly. And the last thing I'm going to get to on this, how about the Master Key Locksmith Auto Jiggler's Door Opener, $19.99. Very useful if you ever lock yourself out of anything. So friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, and know that you're helping us. Also, if you are in Canton, Ohio, make sure you do what I did the other day. Go to the Arcadia Grill. I had the ravioli, loved it. Uh, Christelle, Chicken Fingers, and our friend John, he was enjoying their cheeseburgers, and everybody was chowing, everybody was happy, because their food is delicious, and their bar pours very kind drinks. So make sure you go to the Arcadia Grill in Canton, Ohio. Friends, I've got a few more stories I'm going to get to on my massive overreach of police update here. But this is ForeignPolicy.com, the cable. Exclusive inside America's plan to kill online privacy rights everywhere. So see... The reason I, I, I tied this in is, to me, it seemed very important. Well, giving away our rights uh, to search and seizure, we're, we're messing up the Tenth Amendment uh, terribly, and now it's growing, where it, it's not just, you know, they're, they're checking your, your anal cavity, it's, and there's no just, but you know what I mean. It's not just that they're doing that. It's not that they're taking your blood and your saliva and, and giving dogs instructions to give false positives to find you and giving you DUIs when you're sober. can't even... Every aspect of your life now is falling because somehow along the way we've quit caring about the Fourth Amendment. The United States and its key intelligence allies are quietly working behind the scenes to kneecap a mounting movement in the United Nations to promote a universal human right to online privacy. According to diplomatic sources for an interna internal American government document obtained by the cable, the diplomatic battle is playing out in an obscure, in an obscure UN General Assembly committee, it says, that is considering a proposal by Brazil and Germany to place constraints of unchecked internet surveillance by the National Security Agency and other foreign intelligence services. American representatives have made it clear that they won't tolerate such checks on the global surveillance network. No, of course not, because they want to keep spying on everyone. 
The stakes are high, particularly in Washington, which is seeking to contain an international backlash against NSA spying, and in Brasilia, the Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff is personally involved in monitoring the UN negotiations. This is a huge problem. It says, uh, privately, American diplomats are pushing hard to kill a provision of the Brazilian and German draft, which states the, quote, extraterritorial surveillance and mass interception of communications, personal information, and metadata may constitute a violation of human rights. Can you believe we're living in a country where American representatives are sticking up for the practice of of spying. And it is the rest of the world, which is to some degree doing it to each other as well, as Eric Snowden has said. But again, it's not America. It is the other nations in the world that are begging us to do what we have always done. And that is respect human basic God-given rights. And America is now becoming the exact opposite of that. It, it is so much like watching Germany when uh, the, the fascists and Nazis moved in. Or, again, it was done in Italy. It was done in Russia with Stalin. It was done um, in, in slightly different politics, but the same thing with Mao Zedong in China. It's been done in the Romans. It's how Christ got nailed to a cross. It's happening now. Two more stories. RT Florida cop arrested for wearing guy fox mask at Obamacare protest. This is some good cop news because I don't want to slander all cops. It is perfectly it is perfectly logical to stand up and highlight the cops that do a very good job, or in the future we will have less cops doing so. A Florida police officer who was protesting U.S. President Obama's newly implemented health care law has been arrested because he refused to take off a Guy Fox mask that he was wearing at a demonstration. The hero Erickson Harrell, 39, was wearing a mask and black cape and holding an inverted American flag when police approached him in Plantation, Florida. Harrell told officers that he was protesting Obamacare, but the report, the police report notes that he refused each time that he was asked several times to remove his mask and produce some form of identification or tell us his name and take it into custody. <coughs> That's a lot like the Nazis saying, could I see your papers, please? The mask is in the same one, the mask is the same one, popularized in the film V for Vendetta. Great movie, by the way. And then by the activist hacking collective known as Anonymous. Of course, we've covered them a lot on this show. The police report does not mention whether other protesters were at the scene or if Hurl was holding his own individual rally. It does say Hurl was not willing to tell police what he was do who he was, stating his anonymity was his cause, thus the mask. He stated the mask was used by movement groups around the world for protests. But basically what they did is there's a law. Uh, he was charged with obstruction of justice because he was wearing a hood or a mask on the street. It was a law that was originally designed to prevent the KKK from being able to show up in public with masks on if they were going to protest, and they had to protest as who they were. They're using that law against this man for wearing a mask. So it looks like it might be time for us to get rid of such laws because they are now being used against us instead of for us in the way that they were meant. Friends, the <clears throat> last story I'm going to get to tonight, I'm going to bring Guy Fox down here. Love him, though we do. And again, this is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. KHOU.com. Get this headline up here. Teen visiting Houston for dance classes taken into CPS custody. Now, again, we were just talking about fascism, were we not? Our country, the Child Protective Services, are in our country, and they are stealing children for nothing. I already told you about the Adults Cap of the Month Award, where the, uh, the little girl was taken by CPS to a home where people in the home killed her. And the only reason she was taken from the home was recreational pot use, which wasn't harming the child at all. Um... And for those of you that don't know, by the way, make sure you go uh, to youtube.com slash thecorrectviews, 
vote on your favorite dunce cap from the last year, because I'm going to be sending them the dunce cap of the year when you do. Um, this was a candidate for that award. Uh, it's not going to be getting it, because I want to make it part of the police update, but that's the only reason I'm maybe not sending a dunce cap to Houston. And again, look up Dunce Cap of the Month. There's 12 of them. You'll see what I'm talking about if you're new to the show. Landry Thompson loves to dance, and the 13-year-old's <clears throat> dance instructors get a kick out of it, too. It's definitely my life, she said Emmanuel Hurd. It means the world is everything to me. That's why the trio from Oklahoma traveled to Houston in the first place to spend the weekend dancing and training with some of the industry's best. But that dream of a visit took an ugly turn shortly after leaving the studio Saturday night, when the group, exhausted from their work, stopped off at a nearby gas station. We were on the GPS trying to figure out where the hotel was, and we sat there and dozed off. Let me pause. Police love to do this. They love to get people sleeping in their cars and nail them for something. Loitering. Um, maybe they've had something to drink, so instead of driving home, they go into their car and turn the ignition on to stay warm and get some sleep. Bam! DUI. They love to do greasy, piggy things like that. And this is another instance. They said before they knew it, the police showed up and surrounded the car. And so I was kind of freaked out and surprised by it, said Landry. They just pulled us out of the car, put our hands behind our backs like we were criminals, added Heard. <clears throat> the officer asked me, who's the girl? And I said, she's my student, said Heard. <clears throat> I told him that I had a notarized letter from her, but notarized, no less. Don't just gloss over that. I had a notarized letter from her parents stating that we have full guardianship over her while we're here. All three dancers said that they pleaded with the police, repeatedly telling them their story, but in the end, none of that seemed to matter. They still put the handcuffs on me, and it really scared me, said Landry, and they put me in the back of the cop car, and I was terrified. Landry was taken to Child Protective Services, Nazis. Her mom couldn't believe it when she found out. I was horrified, said Destiny Thompson, I bet. She was there with people that I wanted her to be with. Well, you're a parent. You have no rights. She was with people I trusted. You're not allowed to trust anybody. You're a parent. And now she was taken away from those people in a shelter and with people I don't know. You're a parent. Deal with it. CPS is God. Thompson claimed she was told she'd have to fly to Houston to get her daughter out. But 11 hours later, following repeated phone calls to officers, Laundrie was released back into the custody of her instructors. <clears throat> I would love an apology, said Destiny. Oh, she's nicer than I am. Police officers still aren't commenting about what happened, and the group of dancers plans to return to Oklahoma Monday afternoon. Dear God, they must be glutton for punishments. Uh, that's what I call following your dream, though. Good. Friends, if you are listening to the correct views, I thank you for doing so. Please go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Uh, posting articles, videos up all the time. You might not see as much of me in both forms because I am finishing up uh, some work for a, a, a contest, uh, the InfoWars contest. Uh, my rap project, uh, Closet Monster, hopes to enter it, as does Passing Time. So I'm going to be very, very busy. That's the band I'm in, Passing Time. So, if you don't see as much of me, don't panic, I'm not going anywhere. Please keep sharing my videos. Go to thecorrectviews at hotmail.com and please donate to the show if you can, because every penny you give to me goes towards a better show and a better set. Good night, friends. God bless. Adios, my live listening friends. <laughs>